With around 100 solar systems and over 1,000 celestial bodies, and that's planets and moons, I want to talk about one. Let's talk about the mysterious moon of Crete. Let's talk about the biome, the wildlife, scanning, resource gathering, interactions with the environment, movement, gravity, isolation, and more importantly, combat. Upon landing, the first thing we notice is the moon is relatively barren and seems inhospitable. There doesn't seem to be human settlement really anywhere, so more than likely it's one of those places that hasn't really been touched and for good reason. So don't expect to be doing side missions on behalf of any characters. And don't expect to be seeing interesting characters you might want to interact with either. This is more or less confirmed when you see the oxygen and CO2 levels on the bottom left, which shows you this is not a place to settle. It's not a place anyone would want to be in. It is however a place where our player finds himself or herself for potentially many different reasons. And it also doesn't mean you're the only one who finds this moon interesting. More on that later. Looking further afield, we can see plumes of gas shooting which makes me believe there might be environmental hazards, which also means there's a possibility that certain planets might be toxic to explore and you might need to equip yourself with the right gear to traverse certain bodies. Think about planets that have a different gas composition, gravity, or imagine a runaway greenhouse effect taking place. A similar mechanic could be the type we saw in Breath of the Wild, when Link had to gear up to match the environment and weather to prevent himself from losing health. But this is just speculation on my part. Whether you actually want this mechanic in this game is a whole different story. Let's take a step back for a second. Before actually stepping out of the ship, the first thing you actually notice is your companion. My impression is, this isn't really a game that isolates you. I have a strong feeling if you want, you can likely have at least one person around you to complete missions or just tag along. But if you also want, you can just solo the whole game. In games like Skyrim, companions were around but they never really felt alive. When it comes to combat, yes. But when it actually comes to developing the story or interacting with them from a personal standpoint, not so much. Not the type of banter you would see in a Mass Effect game. While we don't really see that here, it has been noted that interactions with NPCs has been worked on and also the relationship with your companions. In the next shot, we see our characters scanning various objects. Now Fallout has similar mechanics and so do other games. What I do wonder is if it might follow the same route as Matrix Prime for example, which allowed us to scan various objects and artifacts to get a better understanding of the environment and to expand the lore. It might also play a role in the gameplay, similar to Andromeda and The Witcher, where scanning was used to investigate and progress the story forward. Now these features I mentioned might be present in Fallout, but I really couldn't tell you because I've never actually played those games. But the thing to note in this scene is, scanning confirms the use of obtaining resources. Resources that will go likely into shipbuilding, armor, health, and weapon upgrades. Next we come across wildlife which seems to be native to Crete, which begs the question, with over 1000 planets, what percentage of them will actually have wildlife? And will we see differences between them as we go from planet to planet? Anyways, that's a whole different story. The key thing to take away from this interaction is, not everything that comes across you will be hostile. Some might be if you get too close, some might be if they perceive you as a threat, and some might be if they perceive you as just being weak. Next point. Combat. The first thing to take note of is your jump and how you land. It's quite high and the landing seems to cause some type of damage which probably reinforces what I said earlier about gravity playing somewhat of a role in this game. But it's clear now we have a boost like jetpack jump which should bring some, which should bring some verticality into this game. Moving on, combat here seems like your typical standard RPG shooter so nothing revolutionary. The enemies can and will absorb damage unlike what you see in a Call of Duty for example. Switching to a different weapon or loadout will cause the game to slow down. Nothing that actually impacts the combat, but certainly a better mechanic than pausing the whole game. If you're familiar with Skyrim's lock picking system, this should be familiar. You essentially need to match the correct sequence and if you do, you're rewarded. It's an easy enough game mechanic, but to keep in mind that this is a set of novas, so expect more challenging puzzles along the way. Next up, which is quite important, we get to see how combat looks in open space and also how the AI interacts with the environment. On first impression, and I mean the first two seconds, all feels well. These two go into cover while the third enemy takes aim at you. Unfortunately, that's where it stops as he really doesn't need to stand there. But that's not really a big deal, because if the difficulty was higher, those bullets should actually take you down. Now, there are many things to critique like why is he standing on the platform asking to be shot, or why is this guy running away from you with his back turned, especially when there isn't cover and fire. But these are clearly cuts and takes to emphasize and show this. 
which shows you you'll be able to likely interact with hazards, gas canisters and jetpacks in the game from close quarters. And speaking of jetpacks, here we have confirmation of a double jump with a potential dash. From a combat perspective, we know what this brings to the game as Mass Effect fans who played Andromeda can tell you, verticality adds a new and interesting way to play the game. And that's everything we've learned from Crete. I will be covering more Starfield content so if you're interested, consider subscribing.